Uh, from Jared Avia. Subject, I missed the professor in the wrestling business. Hi, K100 fam. Hope everyone is doing well. I know the general consensus on the greatest commentators of all time for wrestling comes down to two names. Gordon Sully and Jim Ross. However, for my taste, someone who should belong in that category, the greatest commentators of all time, will have to be the Professor Mike Tanay. He brought great knowledge, professionalism, and prestige to his roles as both a color commentator for WCW and a play-by-play announcer for TNA. What does Conan and Disco think about Mike Tanay's time in the business? I know both of you worked with Mike for many years, and do any of you know how Mike is doing nowadays? Seems he does not want anything to do with the wrestling anymore, which is unfortunate. I wonder if there's a negative story there about how things ended with him in TNA and what does the crew think? Thanks. All the best. Jared, um, Mike got old, older. I guess he just didn't really want to be in the business anymore. You know, his his work with 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 uh, who is it? Don Don West. Yeah. In TNA, uh, putting over Sports Entertainment Extreme was was fan. It was excellent, excellent commentary, especially with me. He always used to bury me, and it got me over as a heel. Mm. You know, like he he, he would like always like if I said something funny like uh, on on commentary, and Don West laughed. Mike Tanay would go, don't put him over. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it was just like the disdain of Mike Tanay for everything I did in sports entertainment stream was, was, was a really good work. He was, and like, Carter, like he was excellent on a sit down interview. Bro, there was like the, the, that TNA time impact in 2003 was some good, that was some fun TV, wasn't it? Yep. You know, you got like, like those sit down interviews. You could talk about racism and stuff and everything. And Mike Tanay would play the. Mike Tanay was an excellent he character. He played the role show. excellent. Yeah. And excellent. so, he, yeah. And I would call him a corporate kiss ass. What do you mean you, I'm a corporate kiss ass? I go, well, you heard. And, you know, so. But I liked Mike because I used to run shows in Tijuana like 25 years ago. And Meltzer would show up, he would show up couple guys would show up and i always felt like wow these guys are really ahead of the curve because nobody else is coming to these shows to find out what lucha libre is about so he was always a lucha fan that's why it was great that when we did when worlds collide and i forgot whose idea it was exactly might have been mine i'm not sure to use mike Tanay for um when worlds collide because he hit it out of the park, and from there he got a job with WCW. But he was always knowledgeable, always a nice guy, you know, always fun to work with. And uh, I miss him too, man. Hopefully, maybe if if and when I do something in the United States, he might come back for one night to do something with us because it's Lucha you know, Libre. You know, you think about that too. Is like when people think of like like in the terms of borders or something, you know, like like uh, you know, wh- wh- where do you have to go to watch Mexican wrestling or Lucha Libre? So always go, oh, well, Mexico City's too far away and stuff. You got flat. But like, you know, guys in San Diego, L.A., right? maybe in like Arizona and even right. Vegas, like my team, right. well, we can just drive to Tijuana. Right. And we you know, do. Really, we get a lot. Of, we do get it's fans literally from right, there. Right, the, the the building is literally like a mile across the board. It's like it's like it's in, in the United, the bottom of the United States. It's like it's right, right. there, you know. Yeah. Right. So you, so you and could everybody get, speaks like, English, and you can right. use dollars. And there's yeah. a lot of clubs and a lot of strip clubs, and there's a lot of other things to do in TJ after the wrestling show. You and it's right. cheap. Everything's cheap. Yeah. Right. So the guys like yeah, it's, it's a good, it's, it's good to have. It, it seems like like when you talk about like a lot of the shows there. That was kind of like a place where you kind of wanted all the good talent to be because you, it's a good marketing. Right, bro. And all the States, boys you know? want to go there because all the fresh clubs are there. All the good after hours are there. All the best strep clubs are there. Yeah. They, everybody wants to go to TJ. Right. Uh, hey, do you want to go over this Go over this bad bunny thing real quick while I got it here? Yeah, sure. Let's hear it. All right. Update on the bad bunny story. Uh, Brock- Wait, bad bunny or Wale? Oh, I'm sorry, Wale. Um, Broccoli, Broccoli, Broccoli City Festival announces 2022 lineup. Wally says he's pulling out. Um, let's see if you can make heads or tails of this. Done in partnership with Live Nation Urban, the festival weekend will also ser- serve as the launch of the BLK Black Change Weekend, which was created to mobilize young people, companies, and community organizations to work collaboratively to create a more racially equitable world for black millennials and Gen Zers. Uh, da da da. Sean G., the president of Live Nation Urban, says this brand is important as it's much bigger than the announced artist lineup. The mobilization of black people and corporations that are active in the community, the education, conversation, and connections that, ha- that happen at Broccoli Con, and the overall celebration of black culture that happens throughout the weekend are the core tenets of, upon which we are building. Wale reacted to the announcement by t- taking to Twitter to say he's pulling out of the festival. When asked by a Twitter user, he simply rep- replied, request is why before adding that his reasons for pulling out had nothing to do with not being a headliner. And that's all that's reported so far, that he, he said it's, it's due to a res- respect issue. But it's, I don't know, it, what do you make of that? I don't know, but honestly, this could be, the same, 
could be yeah, very vague. It could be exact. It could be the exact same situation of like me getting mad at Joey DeFalco for not prominently placing me <laughs> as a prominent figure on the posters at FSW. Right. You know, and like, and me then refusing to work the show would be the would be the uh, would be what I would have done. Like that. Yeah, and it I'm could saying. it could also be like what they're saying. Hey, I'm a headliner, and they're not using as a headliner. Right. Like who are these bums? Let's actually look at. Yeah. Look, okay. Who's a, who's a do you have the do you have the um, card or whatever the yeah twenty one you know s- twenty one Savage Ari Lennox and Lil Durk all get placed over him on the poster. Would you say those guys are more popular than Wale right now? You know hip hop more than I do, Conan. I have nothing. I have no clue here. I'm not that. You know, Lil Durk's hot. Twenty one Savage is hot. Are they hotter than Wale? I think so. Yeah, maybe probably. Yeah. 